Okay, so today we're going to talk about the um, graphs of logs and exponentials. So it gives us this a function, f of x equals 2 to the x power. So, sorry, let me, there we go. So first, let's go ahead and graph that by filling in this table of values. Okay, so they give us an x here. So we're going to look for 2 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the 0. Now we know this one. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first is just 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third is 8. Now we've talked about these negative exponents. So remember, if this is a 2 to the negative 1 power, instead of being a positive, or instead of being a 2, it's going to be a 1 over 2, or a 1 half. Okay, you could also put that in your calculator. 2 raised to the negative 1 power is 0.5, or as a fraction, 1 half. So either way is fine. You can put it in your calculator. So this one's going to be 1 fourth. And then this one's going to be 1 over 8. So you can see here you've got your whole numbers, 1, 2, 4, 8. Then you've got your fractions, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, and 1 over 8. So let's go ahead and graph those points. So negative 3, 1 eighth. Now it's very small, so just do the best you can there. Negative 2, 1 fourth. Negative 1, 1 half. 0, 1. 1, 2. 2, 4 and 3, 8. Okay, so you get this lovely little curve graph. And it's going to keep on going this way. So what happens with this exponential graph here that we've got? First of all, it's called exponential. So it grows really, 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 really quickly. So it starts out kind of slow. And it's growing, growing, growing. And all of a sudden now it goes really, 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 really fast. So it has a vertical asymptote um, nowhere because it's going to keep on going to the left and this is going to keep on going to the right forever and ever and ever. So there's no vertical asymptote. But a horizontal asymptote, it does have one here. So it's never ever going to pass this line right here. So if I draw that in like a dash line, we've talked about asymptotes before. So we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, so it's going to stay above this line and never, ever pass it. Then it's got an x-intercept. Okay, so x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. But since it has a horizontal asymptote here, it's not going to have an x-intercept because it's not going to cross through the x-axis. But the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, is this point right here. So it has the coordinate point 0, 1 as a y-intercept. Now we'll talk a little bit about domain and range, but not a ton. So remember, domains are x values. So in this case, it's going to go forever and ever to the left and forever and ever to the right. So you can plug in any x value you wanted, and it will always work. So this is going to be all real numbers. But your range is only going to be the values from 0 on up. So we can say... We could say 0 to infinity. Oops. I should put a parenthesis because we're not going to include 0. 0 to infinity, or we could say y greater than 0. Either one of those is fine. So the, ba the basic thing about an exponential function when you're graphing it is know the shape. So it looks like this. And it kind of starts here, and it goes up this way. Um, and then we're going to, of course, graph the inverse of that. So now let's go ahead and find the inverse function of the one that we just graphed. So we're going to switch x and y. Again, I'm going to switch my sides like I always like to do. So now let's rewrite this. Log base 2 of x equals y. So here's our inverse. f inverse of x equals log base 2 of x. Now we've talked about this several times. Here's our log, log base 2 of x. Its inverse is 2 to the x. Those are inverses of each other. So it says graph the inverse function on the same grid. Switch x and y coordinates. So we've done this before where when we're finding the inverse, all we have to do is switch the x's and the y's. So using our table up here at the top, let me see if I can zoom out some. Oh, I can't. Our table up here at the top, we're going to fill in the table at the bottom. 
So up here I have negative 3, 1 8. So here I switch it and I have 1 8, negative 3. So then I'll flip. I have negative 2, 1 4. That switches. Negative 1, 1 half. That switches. 0, 1 becomes 1, 0. 1, 2 becomes 2, 1. And 2, 4 becomes 4, 2. And 3, 8 becomes 8, 3. Now, let's go ahead and graph those on our same grid up at the top. So I'm going to have to come up to the grid here. You won't be able to see my table of values. So the first one is 1 8 comma negative 3. So I'm going to go a little bit to the right and down 1, 2, 3. Then I have 1 fourth negative 2, 1 half negative 1, 1 0, 2 1, 4 2, and 8, 3. So there's our curve, and now when I graph it, notice I'm not crossing the line like the y-axis. I'm not just doing a little quick line like some of you do. So remember, inverse functions are special in that they cross over this line here, y equals x. So you can see they're mirror images of each other. So if this is y equals x, they flip over that line. So everything's going to switch now. So just like our x's and y's switched from here to here, same thing with our vertical asymptote and our horizontal asymptote. So now I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So you can see how this is kind of right along the y-axis. I have a vertical asymptote here. My horizontal asymptote, I have none. And now my x and y intercept are going to switch. So looking at my new graph, this one right here, it doesn't ever touch the y-axis. So I don't have a y-intercept, but it crosses the x-axis at 1, 0, which is switched from this, 1, 0. Just like our x's and our y switch, our domain and range is going to switch. So our domain here is going to be everything bigger than 0, so we could say x greater than 0 and our range is all real numbers. So did you notice anything different about the domain and range of each function? Of course we noticed that they switched. So they're just inverses of each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and just, we're gonna graph these next two examples together. So here I'm gonna fill this in. We're just gonna use the x values negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. That way we get a little picture of our graph, but nothing crazy. So if we fill this in, you can use your calculator here. So two raised to the negative two minus three. I'm gonna change it to a fraction, negative 11 fourths. Actually, no, let's leave it as a decimal so you can graph it easier. So negative 2.75. Then I'm going to plug in negative 1. And I get negative 2.5. Plug in 0 and I get negative 2. Plug in 1 and I get negative 1. And plug in 2, I get 1. Now let me show you a quick way of how you can fill in that table of values. We talked about this before. If you go to y equals, you put in that equation, 2 to the x minus 3, and go second graph, and you see the table of values. And look at there, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and I use these y values that they gave me, so I didn't have to do much work. So now over here, first let's find the inverse function. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to switch x and y. This is good practice for you. I'm going to switch sides here, add over the 3, and now I'm going to rewrite it in log form. So my inverse equals log base 2 of x plus 3. So if I switch these here, this becomes negative 2.75 comma negative 2. Switch this one, negative 2.5, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, and 1 comma 2. So let's graph the function and the inverse. So I'm going to graph the original function in red. So negative 2, negative 2.75, negative 1, negative 2.5, 0, and 
Well, I messed one up already. That's why you don't do this in pen. All right, let me pause it. All right, well, I couldn't put my white out, so let me just fix this one. So this one's wrong. Here we go. Okay, zero, negative two is here. One, negative one, and two, one. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so here's our line right here. Okay, so now let's graph the log function. Let me switch colors here. All right, so now I'm gonna go negative 2.75, negative two, one, two, negative 2.5, negative one, negative two, zero, negative one, one, and one, two. So this one looks like this. All right, so our original graph that we looked at, this one over here, it didn't have anything being added or subtracted out here. So our vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes come from zero, which is kind of nice. On this one that we just did, it has that minus three right here. So what that does is it takes our whole function here, the red one, and it moved it down to where now I'm kind of sitting on top of this negative three. So for our domain, our domain still all real numbers, which means over here, remember, our range is all real numbers. Our range, though, here is y has to be greater than negative 3, which means when I do my log 1 in the blue, x has to be greater than negative 3. So that's what's kind of nice about these is that since it's just flip-flopped of each other, really you're doing the graphs, which you're just doing one table of values and flipping it, but I want to see the function. And then we're just looking at the domain and range. So now this says compare to 2 to the x. That's our original. What happened to 2 to the x minus 3? So if we look at our two graphs here, if I can put them on the same page, you've got this one with the red dots, and then you've got this one here, my first pencil one. So what happens is it goes from being like up here above the x-axis, it shifted down 3. So we could say f of x equals 2 to the x shifted 3 units down. All right, so we're not going to do the last one because you, all you're doing is filling in the table of values, and I think that you probably have the hang of that, so that's not too bad.